oral history interview, no. John McBride, 23rd Tank Battalion, 12th Armored Division, Second World War, interview conducted on the 16th of August, 2008, 12th Armored Division Museum, Abilene, Texas, as part of the reunion. John, thank you for agreeing to sit down with us today. Happy to be here. Great. Well, starting out, joining the Army, what did you do before you joined up? Well, I was a student. I, I was uh, I was going to the University of Illinois uh, and you had to take ROTC, ROTC was required uh, for two years. And then uh, uh, if you got accepted in the, uh, uh, the, uh, for the next two years, why you, you're on the way to get a commission uh, as a second lieutenant. Well, so I, and uh, the beginning of my junior year in October of 42, I joined the enlisted uh, reserve and was in the ROTC horse cavalry at the University of Illinois. And uh, so then, but they didn't, uh, they didn't call, follow through. They took us into the army uh, right after that. And so uh, they sent me out to Fort Riley, Kansas which was the head of the cavalry. And they said, well, we see you have all this experience in horse cavalry. Uh, we'll just put you in the horse cavalry. And I said, my God, I don't want to be in the horse cavalry. <laughs> the only reason I took horse cavalry at Illinois was you had to take ROTC and it fit into my schedule <laughs> pretty well. So, <laughs> so they put me in mechanized. And uh, so then they sent me, uh, eventually I went to uh, uh, armor school at Fort Knox and came out as a second lieutenant tank commander. So that's uh, that's what I did. I didn't do. I had no. Uh, well, I uh, I had no experience at all at anything except going to school and working at a piggly wiggly grocery store. <laughs> so after your training, uh, did you go directly from there to Fort to Camp Campbell with the 12th Armored or uh, no? Did you use any uh, I didn't. I went. Uh, when I got out of uh, OCS, they sent me to the um, 10th Armored Division, which was in Augusta, Georgia, and they sent my brother. I had a tw I had a twin brother that graduated at the same time I, I did from OCS school, and uh, and he was at uh, uh, we called it Camp Campbell. Then it was the uh, uh, 14th Armored Division was there at that time. Uh, and uh, I think the 12th had probably already gone overseas. I'm not positive exactly about the dates. But uh, so anyway, uh, uh, Fort Campbell was a lot, or Camp Campbell was a lot closer to where my hometown of Champaign, Illinois. So I, and they, uh, one of the rules in the Army, but they separated brothers, but twins could be together. And twin, so I uh, asked for a transfer to, to uh, Campbell. and. Uh, and so the, and they gave it to me. So because I, I was a lot ho closer to Champaign, I could get home on weekends and stuff occasionally. So uh, I was there. Uh, they had too many officers, at, and 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 they uh, uh, said there was a chance to go overseas as a replacement. So my brother and I signed up for that, and they sent us over to France, and we were in a repo depot system. And I didn't uh, arrive in the 12th Armored until uh, just before Hurlesheim right after their first combat and they the first week they were in combat they lost a lot of officers so and uh, in, including the the uh, as you know the battalion commander was killed and uh, well at least one company commander several platoon so anyway so I came as a replacement officer at that time and I'd been my experience had only been in the 12th and 14th and it, and it wasn't very good experience I mean it, I was really pretty green to be honest with you and the rest of us were too. <laughs> now, your combat duties said tank commander. Yeah, well, I was in uh, uh, Company B. Uh, I had a platoon. I was in charge of five tanks. And uh, 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 the Captain Lee was the commander of the uh, B Company of the 23rd. And, uh, and he was uh, a, a character, a big character, but he was. He didn't want his men to get hurt, and he he protected us. I remember one time uh, they told us to uh, we had to go. It was a bad situation. Uh, I think it might have been at Hurlsheim. They told us it was our turn to go, and we knew that uh, 
it was kind of a hopeless situation. Been knocking off tanks in the direction they told us to go. So uh, uh, the colonel came down and said, "Well, it's your turn to go," or it might have been a major. I'm sure. But anyway, uh, Jack Leap, our company commander, he was first lieutenant at that time. He was eating a sandwich and he slammed that sandwich down on the ground. He says, "God damn it, Colonel, we're not going." <laughs> and he got away with it. They didn't send anybody. Well, it was suicide. And uh, as a matter of fact, at that time, then I said my my sergeant told me that um, he knew where these eighty eights were coming from. They were knocking off these tanks. And so uh, I said, well, I'll try to flank around to the right. So I. I just took the one tank, and uh, but I had my uh, buck sergeant in there with me because he knew what was going on. Uh, and we probably went a mile to the right, uh, parallel, and then kind of flanked. There was, a, uh, I think, a railroad track there, and we kind of sinked in behind that and 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 came that had turned left and came up uh, parallel with this uh, encampment where the sergeant thought it was coming from. And he was right. They were in there, and they they were not mechanized. They were, they were, their guns were set, and uh, they weren't uh, on tanks or anything. They were 88s, and boy, we we sprayed some uh, machine gun fire in there, and boy, they came out like this, and uh, so that worked. Due to my sergeant, not due to me. <laughs> well, his name was Tom Bell. He's dead now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after Hurlishheim. Uh, were you involved in the Colmar pocket operation? Um, I, I guess I was. I, I didn't, we really didn't know what was going on much. Yeah. Uh, I guess we were. I don't know for sure. Uh -huh. Okay. I know they took, uh, uh, I know uh, part of C Company went down there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure that we did. <laughs> okay. uh, but but they, they had us busy all the time. We weren't sitting around doing nothing. In fact, they never did. You know, they talk about these things. They pull them off the line. They never pulled us off the line. We were always doing something, and uh, which I guess is the way to win a war, huh? Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, the push to the Rhine and being assigned to General Patton. Yeah. Well. How about your thoughts on that? Well, I, I guess he was a marvelous general, knew how to win a war, but we did want to fight for him. He was. Uh, he was just too tough. He. Uh, he run us uh, out of uh, ammunition and fuel, and you know that's a helpless situation when you run out of gasoline, because you're you're sitting setting duck, and uh, and and uh, as you've all heard, they, they always said the blood and guts. It was our blood and his guts, and uh, that's that's the way. But I'm not folding the man because that's the way to win a war. But I I just soon not be at his outfit. Now General Patch didn't get uh, near the notoriety or the, uh, but you know uh, he was. I thought an excellent general, and he knew he didn't. He just knew what he was doing, and uh, he he didn't have a publicist and a photographer and all that with him. But he knew how to fight a war, uh, and with the minimum of casualties. And, uh, I you've probably seen this picture of uh, uh, Patton relieving himself of the ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but that's that's he really did do that and uh, and he had promised that he was going to do that when he got to the Rhine. Yeah. 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 Crossing the Rhine and into Germany. By the way, crossing the Rhine on one of those pontoon bridges is no fun at all. You're in this tank and it's so heavy. And you think if this damn thing breaks, we're going to the bottom of the ride real quick. But the thing undulated like this and I was sure glad when we got on the other side. When we got when I got all my tanks over there I thought, thank God. And as far as I know they didn't lose anybody but doing it, but it's not it's not any fun. Uh, but after the Rhine, we really took a lot of prisoners. A lot of them. I don't uh, well, mostly a lot of times we ran into older men and probably tr German troops that weren't good and uh, probably uh, older and so on and forth, but but we ran into one batch. They were uh, we came up to this town, and uh, one of the one of the regrets I have from the war is that uh, we destroyed a lot of church steeples, and and we just if we saw a church steeple, we just blow it out because the Germans would climb up them and and 
have their observers up there, but uh, we, uh, another thing we did when we would take it, when we would go into these towns and we'd get the town, why the, the troops would go in and steal the candles out of the church because, you know, for, for lights, you know, I, but it, it wasn't uh, sacrilegious to them, they just needed the candles. But anyway, uh, we came up to this one town and uh, we were getting a lot of fire back and uh, so we were kind of stopped outside, and then finally I was in the uh, front tank that day. Uh, usually, uh, usually a platoon leader was in the first tank, uh, second lieutenant, and uh, uh, we had at that time we just had two second lieutenants in yeah. in our company, and uh, the other one was uh, Jake Powell, and uh, I think his name really was John Powell, but. Uh, we all called him Jake, and sometimes we called him Grandpappy because he was about 27 years old, and we were all about 21 or 22. But he was a really nice man. So we were lined up to go, and, they, and uh, Jack said, "Well, you got to go, Max, take off." And uh, and uh, Jake was—I had my five tanks, and Jake had his five tanks right behind me. And and uh, Jake says, "Don't go, Mac," he said. I'm sorry, but <laughs> he didn't want us to go, <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I went on in, and the road forked, and I took the right park, which was, <laughs> I didn't know which way to go, and uh, and I were, we were shooting Germans, and they were, uh, and uh, Jake took the left park, and uh, he got killed. <laughs> they, Got him through the head. <laughs> I didn't cry then, but I'm crying now when I think about it. What a nice guy he was. <laughs> but uh, so then they told me. Well, we we chased them down there, and they went into uh, uh, a cemetery. And so we shot up the hell up the cemetery. We got a lot of, and then we finally got got them. And we found out the ra reason they were so tough was that they were just young kids. They were. They had been in officers' training school for the Germans, and as they getting, they needed troops, and they took them out of school and put them. And boy, they were tough. And uh, but we killed a lot of them. Uh, but they got Jake through the head with a, I think a sniper. There were there were some buildings there, two-story buildings. I imagine somebody was in the second story and got him. I don't know for sure, but anyway, they told me to find out what happened. So I had to walk. The column was all closed and uh, uh, stopped, and so I had to walk up there and find him. But most of them weren't that tough. Most of the Germans weren't that tough. But after that, when we sort of swung down towards Austria, we ended up in Austria at the end of the war. And uh, we had some black troops uh, assigned uh, to us. You know, it was all segregated those days. But And they had, uh, I don't know how many there were, maybe. 25, 30, they were infantry. They had a lieutenant that uh, was uh, the white, and he was afraid of the, the troops were going to shoot him, so he was scared to death of them. So we put him in uh, Bal Gunner's uh, tank so where he'd be safe, and, uh, and they had a sergeant who was a good soldier, uh, ran the, the black troops. And uh, and they did a good job. We could communicate with them. At a, some of our tanks had kind of like a telephone on the back where the troop, the infantry behind us could talk to the tank commander. And uh, but you know, on the last day of the war that we were in the war, which is uh, you know, my I might have been the same day as the end of the war, one day before uh, that that boy got killed, and he was the best troop trooper there, but uh, they had some problems, although they, uh, they, they shot some prisoners, and, uh, uh, and they were terrible looters when we got into town, and, uh, and I don't think, we, did, we didn't even try to control them. Uh, we thought it was up to him, their officer, but he couldn't do it either, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, but that's the way the war went. Uh, that when they talk about atrocities, we we did it too.
and uh, I didn't personally, uh, but uh, I know it went on. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, <coughs> as far as the liberation of Landsberg, uh, were you, was your uh, outfit involved at all? I don't know. I, I've kind of forgotten where we were. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, I remember uh, we were around, uh, uh, got uh, relieved, uh, some of those um, prison camps around Dachau, or uh, we, we, our outfit uh, re released some of those prisoners. I never did go in, but I know uh, I saw them, and uh, God, they were delighted to see us, the prisoners. And we were glad to get them out, too. A lot of them were not, uh, you talk about the Jews, but a lot of them that we got were, were Polish, I think. I don't know why they were in prison, but but they were. Now you talked about the last day of the war. When the war ended, what did your duties become? Where did you go? What did you have to do? Oh, it was pretty nice. By, by, by the way, but at the end of the war, there was the. the uh, that's when Jack Lee and uh, and Harry Bassey went over and rescued those political prisoners from uh, the. the uh, uh, Idle Castle, I think it was, uh, and uh, they left uh, left me in charge of the company when they left. Uh, Bassey was a maintenance officer; he was a first lieutenant, and uh, Jack was still a first lieutenant. We all got promoted right about the time the end of the war was over. But uh, and that's when uh, Jack Lee uh, and Harry Bass took two tanks to went over to this civilian. That, there's been ver various b versions of this, but I know I think it was a civilian that came and told him. Uh, I remember seeing the man. I think he was a civilian. They told him about the prisoners, and 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 Jack uh, took Harry, Harry, and they went in the two tanks to, and they you sure heard that story how they. Uh, uh, but uh, but Jack uh, Jack was a uh, Lee was a boozer, and uh, he had uh, he was. He was about half loop when he went on that. <laughs> and, and don't get me wrong, he was a good soldier, but he he liked his booze. And you know his tank got burned up on that deal, and uh, it he had a, a whole bunch of cognac on the back of that tank. And, and uh, <laughs> well, you know there was no, no no place on a tank to carry anything. You know we we put everything on the back there, and uh, he had a lot of booze back there. And, he didn't care about losing the tank, but he sure did like losing that booze. <laughs> yeah. oh, he was a character. You know, after the war, he found his wife in bed with some guy, and he went after him with an axe. And uh, and then he uh, he was a fugitive. Then he, I don't know if he killed the man or not, but he, he went to Canada. He, he lived in New York. And not too far from him, he was, and he was uh, at large. But they finally got him and put him in a federal penitentiary someplace, and uh, he uh, and he died in prison. And we don't know; we never found out why he died. But we all suspect he got in a fight with somebody because he was kind of a hair trigger guy, and uh, good man. But he was a, he was a real character. He had some flaws. I don't get me wrong, but uh, he didn't want us to get killed. He was looking out for us. And, uh, but, uh, well, well, after the war, by the way, I, uh, they, uh, I didn't have enough points to go home, and I wasn't married, and I wasn't really wild to get home. Well, I would like to go home, but they had, um, I had still one more year of college to take. I had finished three, and uh, that would wouldn't have would have stopped in September if I didn't get home by September. Well, I'm going to have to wait a year to get those fall courses, and so uh, I didn't I, I didn't make that, so I didn't really care. Well, they transferred to, to the First Armored Division, and I think the 12th kind of I don't know what happened to the 12th. I guess it must have dissolved. I don't know the uh, so they I went to the First Armored Division, and I was a company commander then. I was. Uh, I was just a first lieutenant, but they, uh, uh, been, well, when I first got there, I think I was a lieutenant, and then right away I, I became a company commander, and my brother was there too. He was a company commander in the same 1st uh, tank battalion, 1st armored division, 
and they called us the constabulary, they called us, and we uh, had some patrols around the area. We lived in Karlsruhe, um, Germany, most of the time, and we had the, uh, we took over a hotel in that town, and we put the troops uh, in, a, in, in this hotel, not pretty nice barracks, uh, pretty nice uh, accommodations for them. And the uh, first sergeant was uh, in charge of that, and uh, the five officers, or four or five, whatever we had, we we took over the, one of the nicest town uh, houses in town. And uh, then we hired a, a, guy, a man that had been a chef in a restaurant there in Germany, and his wife, and they lived in the basement of this house. And he and he cooked, or and she cleaned, and uh, he, we'd take these uh, cigarettes and other chocolate and stuff we had, and tr he'd go trade that for meat and vegetables. And boy, we we he could cook, and we and it was, boy, it was really nice for about six months or so. And then they kind of got chicken on us a little bit, and they had to. But we did do some patrolling. We had, we had we sent out some patrols, and I remember we made people turn in weapons. We had piles of weapons that we got, and uh, but it was pretty easy duty. Then oh, I've forgotten. I know I got to go to Paris for two weeks, and so uh, it wasn't it wasn't bad duty. But then I went home in the next spring, and uh, and uh, went back to college. That's my story. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, sir, I want to thank you for taking the time. Yeah. Uh, also, you're know, talking about some things that weren't that easy to talk about. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. But this way we have it for future generations, yeah. and I thank you so much. Yeah, well.